Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I did survive my fantasy football draft, which was yesterday. That's why I only did one video yesterday, because I had to go. But, um, I, I feel like I drafted a pretty decent team. My first, well it wasn't actually a first pick, he was uh, a guy that I got from last year um, that I already had, and we got to... Uh, they call it franchising, where you get to keep one player from your team last year. So Antonio Brown was my was what I started with. That's not a bad start to a team, I would say. And I've been watching Hard Knocks uh, on HBO this year, which has been following the Los Angeles Raiders. And, um, or is it Oakland? Why am I drawing a blank on that? I can't remember if they're in Oakland or Los Angeles now, and I've been watching the show for <laughs> two or three weeks. But anyway... Um, so Antonio Brown is on the Raiders now, and so I've been uh, watching that, um, and he, he's he been having feet problems, but I think that's all good now. And he's been having a helmet, uh, or some problem where he said he didn't like the new helmet standard or something, <laughs> something silly like that. Now, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. You all, Everybody that listens to me on this channel, they know that the Digital Asset Investor does have an official Digital Asset Investor neighbor. You also know that we have an official language snob of the Digital Asset Investor channel, and that is my friend who makes fun of me when I mispronounce things, and so I made him the official language snob of the Digital Asset Investor channel. Well, now I have one more person that I'm going to add into the mix. I, I had a, a, a question or, a, or something I was trying to decide on the other day, and so one of the people in the XRP community, I just said, okay, well, I'll go out, I'll ask him what his opinion is on this. And I feel like he advised me in a, in a good way what, I, what he thought I should do in this situation. And so while I was in that conversation, I, it just came to me that he could be my official, the official advisor to the Digital Asset Investor Channel. And so now I'm proclaiming that this particular guy, and I'm not gonna name his name yet, but if he wants me to, then we'll, I'll let you know who it is. But he's the official advisor to the Digital Asset Investor channel now. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's look at what Chinu Patel sent me at Chinu Patel 29. Um, the first thing here is, this is from Rhythm Trader, one of my f favorite Twitter handles. That's a definite follow for you. It's not a, uh, I think Rhythm Trader is more of a Bitcoin person, but I like their tweets anyway. What if I said I wanted to borrow $100 from you and pay you back $99 five years later? Would you do it? Of course not. Yet this is happening right now with nearly 17, what, what is this, million, billion, trillion dollars of uh, bonds with negative yields. It's not going to end well. Yes, it's a joke. It's a, I call it the joke economy is what we've got now. But anyway, I just thought that was great. All right, and then Mr. BXRP, at XRP, Mr. Um, sent me this from Cryptopolis. Uh, this is too coincidental. Global trade escalation, global recession looming, global negative interest rates, global currency manipulation, devaluation, now a single global digital currency, and he's referring to that, um, the, what the Bank of England came out, I guess that's what he's referring to there. Um, who has been working with over 50 central banks and governments? And then he shows that article that's gone around for a long time uh, from The Economist, Get Ready for a World Currency, and the, the, the money's burning there. He says, not conspiracy theory, but being, being recited above. These are facts. Then look at, the, at that picture, burning cash, call for a world currency, published date 1988. On August 25th, today, folks, that's weird too. August 25th, 1988, David Schwartz filed a patent for a multi-level dis distributed computer system. Um, and then he, sh he shows the, the video, that's my video, I guess, uh, from yesterday. Which, by the way, I had no idea that that video would have the impact that it, that it did. But I mean, this the, I've, I've seen that a lot of people were watching that video. And that was a really 
that was a lot of things really hit. I think hit me and a lot of people when we saw this Bank of England guy come out and talk and out loud talk about the U.S. Um, dollar could be replaced because and and one of the points Brad Com, I was listening to Brad Combs this morning who you should go subscribe to his channel Brad Combs he does investment perspectives on YouTube um, but he was he was talking about how my uh, that video uh, everybody should watch that video and and he was talking about one of the points that I had made which was that that the Europe is is a uh, a, an ally to the United States, of course, or England, UK, um, and this guy would not come out and say something like that if this was not already worked out. That was the one of the points I was making in that video, and it's so true. That guy, um, it's one thing for China to do it, or for Russia to do it, or for um, Iran to come out and say that the U.S. dollar does not need to be the reserve currency, but for a guy from the Bank of England to do it. That's a whole different ball game. These, these people are not anti-U.S. These are people that are that are intertwined with us. They're they're not our enemies. They're allies, and so that that guy did not come out and say that for no reason. This cake's baked already, folks. I mean, I can smell it already. Okay, um, let's uh, Lionel. Um, 600 pound billion, uh, 600 billion pounds processed per day. XRP is going to smash Bitcoin to oblivion. And this is a from Stuart XRP. This is a video he posted that you should go watch. It's only two minutes and 15 seconds, and it's um from uh, Dave Ramsden from the Bank of England in May of this year. And um, just if any, what's very and that's part of what I'm going to do in this video today. What's very interesting. Is, is after that Bank of England announcement to now go back through Twitter in the XRP community and, and I'm seeing a lot of people that are pulling different things that have been posted in the past about all these connections and now now when you see these these postings some of them were from back in 2018 where some of these genius people in the XRP community got it back then before anybody knew what was going on I mean, a lot of them got it way before I did, and and so now I'm going to show you a couple of things that should blow your mind. Um, but this is one thing you need to go look at. Okay, uh, I also wanted to mention that um, that uh, this person who I didn't know had done a. Um, this is Riley Q at Riley Quinn. Everyone knows Hodor, but do you really know him? Read all about your favorite XRP blogger on Coil. The interview, and um, this is an interview that was done with Hodor, and very interesting write-up. And one of the more interesting things that I read in here is that um, I, the way I read it, uh, Hodor is is does not intend to remain anonymous for the long term. He he in here somewhere he said that he may uh, come out and be known, you know. As thing as things turn the corner, he's he's talking about how so we're so much closer in the progress of where things are versus when he started. That now he, he may start to uh, ease on out. That'll be that'll be interesting to see. Um, then from uh, XRP Mister, this is another classic. This is one of the things I was telling you about. This is one of the videos I've I've shown it on my channel before. It's from from a few months back. I, and I, let me see who who. I've got the, the YouTube there. You don't have to be in the FBI to put all this together. The one thing that we all share in common is our common sense. It's a freaking superpower these days. Um, right here, and this this is the video where, where Christine Lagarde is literally, I mean, she lays out everything she's saying. If you're, if you're really paying attention, she's screaming Ripple and or XRP, and she just doesn't say the word. Now... Uh, just a, a point uh, worth mentioning here. Um, she has specifically said, and I'm going to show you a tweet in a minute, where the, the Bank of England, um, Mark Carney, that said the U.S. dollar needs to be replaced by digital currency. There, I'm going to show you a quote where he specifically said that it, that Bitcoin is not efficient enough. It's not going to be Bitcoin is what he said. Christine Lagarde said the same thing one time. She said, not Bitcoin and not Ethereum. She has never said, not XRP. <laughs> so, 
Um, and you, you just go, but you need to go watch this. The person that posted this on YouTube is D, uh, D-R-G-C-I is the channel. Okay. Um, and then I wanted to, I saw this and this looked cool. You need to see, you need to go check this out. This is from XRP underscore Crow Stetis. And he has his own website. Go to Stetis.hr. He has some really cool infographics, but he, this one I had not seen, so I wanted to show it to you. Spring Partnership infographic. Find out which companies are partnering with Ripple Spring FinTech Project. Ripple's ecosystem initiative to build the internet of value, $500 million invested in the ecosystem, 20 plus projects. And these are um, some of the projects we talked about securitized yesterday, but this is what a lot of people don't understand about XRP. Every company that you're looking at here is a potential new, some not just potential, but some are existing use cases for XRP like COIL. Um, the Forte, as I recall, is a gaming thing. Then Raised in Space, I want to say, is for the music industry. Um, Securitizes is tokenizing. To that's They're going to tokenize assets. So that's what all we're talking about here. Um, now, Kava is something I was talking to Brad Combs about. And I need to, I'm going to look further. In, I told Brad I was going to look more into Kava because he has been doing some videos on that. And he has some interesting theories that he's working with that too, um, which I found very interesting. Um, so we're going to be talking more about that. All right. Um, and then Michael at VAL5 Link sent me two things that I thought were interesting. This is from, you remember the other day, I think this is from the same thing. The other day, there was, it showed Ripple going up to $9 or something. I don't know if this is the same thing, if this is what happened there. But it says, during the br brief crash, um, traders managed to pick up Ethereum at 33 cents and Bitcoin at a dollar, reports News BTC. However, BitMax says it, it's reversing all orders that were processed at the time. This is one exchange on called BitMax. Apparently, it says a technical issue with Amazon Web Services caused this. Can you imagine being on that? <laughs> can you imagine being on that exchange and you see that you can pick up Bitcoin at a dollar? How much money must the, some of those people have spent to pick it up? I mean, if Bitcoin was at a dollar, I would have just gone in there and gone crazy. But imagine, they said they're going to reverse all the trades, but golly, that's kind of scary too. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, Michael at VAL5 Link sent me this as well. Now this, um, this Rachel Lee it is real sharp, I mean, real smart, uh, sharp person and has posted all sorts of, of interesting things in the community. Now... Um, this particular tweet I, I had never seen, but Michael sent it to me, and some of the things said in here are pretty pretty genius and pretty interesting. Look at this. Forget about Swift, Stellar, Stellar, IBM, and the rest. Ripple is the chosen one. XRP is what will take the financial world forward and bring us to the new world order. Now remember, Brad Garlinghouse has not said new world order one time. He has said it on stage at least three or four times that I have seen myself. Keeps on saying this. Um, it says, um, she says, um, bring us to the new world order where artificial intelligence, robots and machines will be able to make autonomous payments. Um, and then she tweeted out this from, and this is from uh, Joel Katz, okay, who is David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple. Rapid payments create dem demand for rapid settlement. Ripple is positioning XRP as a rapid settlement tool. The primary reason Ripple is working on in the payment space is because current payment technology isn't good enough to get the benefits of XRP. If Swift builds a modern open payment system, then we'll position XRP to settle payments in that system. If Swift builds a closed garden, we'll build open systems that compete with it. There are two reasons we'll win. Open systems eviscerate walled gardens. Swift has no revenue model other than charging their customers and will have to charge them for everything from development to operation. Um, and then she goes on. If you find yourself doubting, take a step back and have another look at Ripple. Start again with my tweets on the board of directors at Ripple. Understand that a company is driven by this board. Look at their globalist roots and agenda. There's no way that XRP fails. To those claiming that XRP can only reach a certain value for many years or restricting something they don't understand, 
they understand very little about. All Ripple needs to do is flip a switch when the time is right, and the gnashing of teeth, I think that's, this is some, uh, I don't remember, this is some, I think it was from either the bearable stuff or whatever. Gnashing of teeth from Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, Maximus will commence. And I believe that she's right that, that when, when, when XRP really does turn on, wait till you see all of the screaming and carrying on from the Bitcoin community at that point. What's going to really drive them crazy is when you tilt, when it, when it's doing that as a result of utility and they can't say anything that will drive that price back down. Uh, take a step out of Twitter for a moment. Take a look at the world around you. The global financial system banking doesn't have five or 10 years to play with. We are nearing implosion, the implosion point and X rapid going live this year is time to co uh, coincide with the events to follow. Do your own research. Don't let anyone tell you this or that is impossible, for they themselves know not what they speak of. There is nothing mathematically holding XRP back from $1,000 plus overnight. Good luck with your investments. Take care of your communities. Be a role model. Folks, that, that was an interesting, interesting little write-up. But what makes it more interesting to me is, and, and don't, don't walk away from this say, oh, well, digital asset investor says we're going to go up to thousand dollars overnight. That is not what I said. I'm reading you uh, what some information that was tweeted out by Rachel Lee, and and I'm not saying I agree with every single thing, but I agree with most of what's written here. Um, who knows about this? Who knows? Um, <laughs> I I don't. I personally do not place any limits in my mind as to what can happen with XRP. Uh, maybe a year ago I would have, but after what I've seen over the last year in my studies and the people that I've talked to behind the scenes, not at Ripple, I don't know anybody at Ripple, by the way, I wanna make sure that's clear. But just, you know, like Brad Combs said in his video this morning, we're retail investors, we can only find out so much information. But I wasn't born yesterday and I've pieced enough things together at this point I'm more bullish on XRP than I have been since I got in this in 2013 by a long shot. And by the way, the official advisor to the Digital Asset Investor channel also thinks that and advises me as such. <laughs> um, okay, Bull Run Wonka. This is what I was telling you about earlier. This is from Mark Carney. Uh, Bank of England boss Mark Carney said digital currencies such as Bitcoin are not efficient and do not do what they are supposed to do as he called for a crackdown on cryptocurrencies. In his speech on the future of Bitcoin, Mr. Carney said the time has come to hold the crypto asset ecosystem to the same standards as the rest of the financial system. See, what he's saying here could have been at the time perceived to think that he was anti-crypto assets. But that's not the case at all. He's pro crypto assets, but as I've told you a thousand times on this channel, the reason I did not invest, the reason I did not choose Bitcoin versus XRP ultimately is because of this right here. These powerful people are not, you, you can be an anarchist all you want, but Bitcoin is not going to replace the powers that be. For that reason, I went with the adults in the room who went straight to the regulators and started with them and they are the ones that are the XRP guys folks the greatest digital asset ever created all right um, next I also saw this from Bull Run Wonka connect all ledgers using ILP uh, HODL XRP Wonka knows now um, the this video right here is from money 2020 and Brad Garlinghouse is on stage money 2020 is one of those conferences that, that all the big the big guys go to. Chris Larson has been at this. In fact, Chris Larson was at Money 2020 when he made a comment about how he thought that XRP could play a part in the next financial crisis. There's a video on that out there too that you, I've shown on this channel before. But this one is about, is Brad Garlinghouse talking about the Interledger protocol. Very interesting. You need to go watch it. Okay. I uh, got this from Craig Heaton. I like to show you things that are adoption. This guy and all of my European friends are, are going to inform me who, which football manager he actually is. 
Um, Craig said it in his when he sent me the message, but I, I didn't write it down or I didn't I didn't pull that up. But this guy runs a football what or football team which we call soccer here in the United States, but over in Europe they call it football. And so, um, but look here, there's a Bitcoin advertisement, it's all behind them. So they do these interviews with all these advertisements behind them. And so I guess the advertisers pay to be in these interview uh, when the interview is being done. And finally, every once in a while I see something that everyone just has to see. You, you have to have a strong stomach here though, folks. This is a, a mother who is playing a joke on her kids, <laughs> pretty, <laughs> a pretty gruesome joke on her kids, pretends to have chopped her finger off. But I laughed out loud at this when this poor kid over here, he's like, he doesn't know what to do and he's going crazy. I would never do this one to my kids, but I, once the, the, you, you realize, once the kids realize mom's not really hurt, it's just, it's just so funny, <laughs> but I can't even imagine. But anyway, this was from John Kevin Moo. I saw him uh, post this yesterday. I just started laughing watching this. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that my son is doing a travel ball tournament today and I'm going to have to go. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go watch it. And um, so hopefully we'll have a good day. The, the travel ball for fall just started back. Thanks for listening.